I want to first of all thank uh, India Today for uh, giving us this opportunity. Uh, this is the last session. I know I'm standing between you and the lunchtime. Um, and as usual, uh, academia is a loner, so we are made to stand alone, uh, not in a panel. But definitely I want to reflect the concerns raised by the panel that was talking about solar and renewable energy. Um, first of all, I want to start with the mission that we had. This is a, one of the um, segment of our campus that shows the um, solar farm that we installed almost 10 years back. And this has been the story for today's renewable energy and especially when we talk about mega farm. And this was born out of the vision of our Honorable PM. Almost 12 years back, we installed this facility. Now, at the backdrop, you see another housing. Not only we have connected this solar energy to the grid almost a decade back, but we quickly switched over to making solar panels. Now, that answers the question about what is the need of the hour and what academia has to do. If you see here, this is a panel, the panel making industry that we have set up. And what is the tune at which we are manufacturing? It's about 45 megawatt that we are generating per year. So this is the state of our facility that we have. And this is one of the way that we can bridge the skill gap between industry and academia. I just want to take you to the next slide. This is the site at which the solar manufacturing is set up. Because if you look at the academia and you look at the three gig, 300 gigawatt worth um, space that we have um, to, uh, to bring renewable energy, where is the manpower? If I were to ask a question in this audience, how many of you have at least touched a silicon panel or a silicon cell, you know what the answer would be. Now leave alone the question of just touching or handling a panel or a cell. How many of you, how many of us are geared up to make a single panel on our own? Then that shows that there is a serious bankruptcy as far as silicon technology is concerned. We have policy in place, we have business in place, we have the LCOE calculations in place, but who will make the panel and who will make the cell and who will make the ingot? And that's exactly what we have done. And this is an ambitious project where our students are geared up, they are trained, and this is, a, this is a facility that we have specially made, which has a non-Chinese instrumentation, so that even if we have some challenges in the future, we will still be able to perform. <clears throat> and as you can see here, our target is to train 1,000-odd students of all cadre, from the Polytechnic or from ITA or from the BTEC or from even post-graduation, that we can train the students. This project was actually launched by our Honorable PM way back in 2020, but because of the COVID, we started it late. As of now, I should say that we have already manufactured up to five megawatt of solar panels, and not only that, we have not used just for captive um, requirement, but we have already dispersed it to other nations. We have exported these panels to two African countries, third world countries. We have also exported this to Australia. 
And all this is happening in the portals of Pandit Dindyal Energy University. So we are not only touching the global need, we are not only touching the national need, but core to this initiative is the skill training. And I, I just want to take you, uh, give you a glimpse of what we have achieved so far. This is the inside view. You see the um, panels are stacked up. This is a beautiful landscape where skill training can go to the core. To the last mile, we can scout our students. And this is one way we can bridge the gap between industry. So if you actually uh, want to look at the um, skill requirement, I can say that we are already making industry ready, camera ready um, human capital. So the industry doesn't need to invest into any training for hiring our students. And this has actually um, enhanced the employability level to a greater height. Now, the next challenge that we have is about how relevant we can make our students employable. You saw in the panel people talking about um, rooftop solar, which can actually become order of the day, which is government's bigger mission than even a horizontal solar farm. And here is one technology that we have um, jointly demonstrated with the, com with the industry. We are actually looking at wind turbine which can be mounted on the rooftop because it's very hard to bring in the uh, expertise of a wind energy because of the cost involved and the space that requires. So we have integrated rooftop solar and rooftop wind. And what do we do with this energy? We can actually harvest it by storing it in a battery system. <clears throat> this is one of the first demonstrations where we have integrated rooftop hybrid smart grid uh, demonstration where we bring solar, wind, storing that to um, a battery. And this battery is a non-lithium battery storage. And then you can also demonstrate how you can use this for charging the vehicle. This is another view graph that gives an idea about the longevity of the new technology that is coming. Our Honorable Minister was talking about other formats of uh, energy storage. And here is one demonstration where we can go up to 100 kilowatt hour. And this is the size which actually has to go in for a bargain when we compare with uh, the lithium footprint because it's almost one-tenth of lithium footprint. But then the beauty of the non-lithium battery technology is that you can actually go for a 25-year longevity. This is called redox flow battery. And this will come as a very big substitute for the existing technology. So if you think about grid support, lithium has its own limitation. So when lithium will have a limitation, where will you look for? These are the new generation um, flow batteries that are coming up. And the PDU is actually demonstrating this to most of our stakeholders. And we are actually trying to scale it up to 500 megawatt hour and one gigawatt hour in the days to come. Now, this is one way that you can also go completely green. At PDU, we want to demonstrate how every building can go green, how the entire campus can go green. And uh, you may be surprised that we don't even have one single diesel generator. There is no DG set because we want to nurture only renewable energy as storage of a cleaner form so that we can completely comply to a net zero demand. <clears throat> Now, the other question comes, where does the academia stand in green hydrogen, the other formats of renewable energy? We are also, in, uh, incidentally, we are plowing deep and wide into geothermal, and we already have demonstrated up to 100, uh, 100 kilowatt of uh, geothermal, which can be used for many applications. That is also on the run. We have done this as a pioneering initiative in Dolira. We, are, we have started uh, drilling in uh, Unai. These are the first 
uh, results from geothermal as well. But when it comes to green hydrogen, today we have a capability to demonstrate up to 100 kilogram of hydrogen per liter. <clears throat> and this is, uh, these are um, patented uh, technologies. We have already gone for pilot production and we will be soon trying to tie up with industry to demonstrate and take it forward for a scale up. <clears throat> now, when we talk about skill development, I just wanted to give you another edge. One thing is we becoming self-reliant and we, the academia has to become a mini industry by itself in order to bridge this skill gap. If you bring the industry, then now the new format that we sense is industry is coming to us for training as well. We are not sending our students to the industry, but industry is willing to send their personnel to be trained in the midships. And you may be surprised that our manufacturing unit is actually having three shifts. We work till morning three. And between three to seven is the only idling time. So we have actually brought an industry which really answers the question about Skill India. Now if we talk about Make in India, if we talk about Atma Nirbar Bharat, as uh, Amit Sinha pointed out in the earlier session, we definitely need to invest into human capital. And there is always reluctancy from the academia to go big because they don't want to burn their uh, fingers, they don't want to go into this landscape where the investments are huge. This is where the triple helix model comes into picture. What is this model? Government, academia and industry partnership. This is one demonstration where we have completely closed the gap between industry and academia. This is one of the other uh, examples that I wanted to leave with you. Huge investment from British Petroleum. We have gone in the highways and byways of some villages, semi-urban and rural landscape. We have brought women and we have trained them in all these NSQ uh, F level four. And this is an ongoing skill development program for several initiatives. And the last one, I just want to touch and finish with this and probably take some questions. You all are hearing much about semiconductor as much you talk about renewable energy. And uh, Gujarat is the place of happening now, a lot of investments happening. Now, where is the skill training? And where is the human capital for this? This is where we plunged into another action as much as we took a bold initiative uh, to plug the gap between uh, industry academia in terms of renewable, we have actually joined with uh, Micron. <clears throat> now, this is, uh, this is not really on the renewable. This is more on the integrated circuit chips, IC chips, but definitely it has a parallel or a very close narrative with renewable because your silicon cells are also semiconductors in one sense. So, we have gone further. Now, Micron, I am very happy to acknowledge their partnership. This will be the first place where all the missionaries have come from Micron, Singapore. We have already started uh, initializing these instruments, and by next month, we will be starting the skill center. And we will be training the likes of ITI, uh, the diploma, and BTEC holders. Now, why I'm giving this example is, this gave a prompting for us to shift your gear one step more to see whether we can even address the question regarding the trained manpower for making wafer to sell. And that's our next initiative. We are cohorting with the government of Gujarat uh, to make sure that we also train our students not only making cell to panel, but we will also make wafer to sell. And this cannot happen without the benevolence of the government of India, the government of Gujarat. And this is the um, landscape that we have already. These machines are there. And it is, uh, it is something that nobody can imagine that uh, academia can take this risk going into this sort of infrastructure to train the manpower.
So I just want to stop here with this and probably take some questions. Uh, the question that academia has to ask is, if not now, when? If not me, who? So this rigorous introspection is needed from the academia. And when I'm talking with this confidence, it cannot happen without hand-holding with industry and the government. We have had the benevolence of both. But academia has contributed more than 30% into the infrastructure um, resources that we need. So unless academia rises to the occasion for the amount of skill set that we have, we need in all formats of renewable energy and more so in the upcoming semiconductor industry, the human capital will be very, very poorly placed. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to appreciate your uh, presence here. And I want to challenge, like uh, our previous speaker said, there is no thank you slide for my presentation. But I just want you to partner with us. Uh, there should be a very rigorous soul searching as to how much industry would like to invest into academia to bring the manufacturing line right into the campuses. And there cannot be only one institution called PDU for the entire country. In the north and south, in the east and west, this story has to be told many times so that the whole nation together will rise as an army. And that's why I like how the India Today titled my uh, topic as how to raise the brigade, skill brigade. And it's a big challenge. But I want to sincerely appreciate both the uh, benevolence of industry and uh, government in making this entire challenge a very rich enterprise for the academia. And I'm sure as we are sharing this with you, there will be many more academia which will rise up to the occasion to provide a brilliant um, skill set for the nation. Thank you.